probably one of the most wanted, most played and most seen tech mod recently is and will be CREATE. With its own style of implementing technology without going too far from the vanilla experience, it's just phenomenal. And yes, ahoy guys, after two weeks I'm finally back with this gigantic mod in one video. Before we start, a question I was asked really, really many times. No, I'm not a 12 year old boy, I'm 19 and no, I don't have a pee pee. I'm a girl. If you don't believe me, watch my new hardcore series Zelda Minecraft on my gaming channel or how I call it, Zellcraft. Please check it out, I try to edit as much as I can to make it more funnier, even making my own animations and weird photoshop stuff. And also, disclaimer, if I forget to mention anything, please don't kill me, I'm also just a human. In-game guides. Before starting, for nearly every block there's an in-game guide if you hover over it and either shift or hold we. Those with the ponder mechanic even have an animated guide. <laughs> Press Q to pause it and identify blocks you aren't familiar with. Sometimes there's even more than one animation. Click D or the arrow to get to the next one. Materials. Mostly you will now find copper and zinc throughout the world as ores. Their only use is to craft brass, more about that later. But copper will oxidize through various color patterns over time until it turns to this greenish blue coloration. And what you will need a ton of at the beginning before you can upgrade is andesite alloys, crafted very easily with andesite and either zinc or iron nuggets. Also now you can craft normal and red sand paper. Its only use is to get polished rose quartz crafted into electron tubes or for chromatic compounds, more about that later. Power generators. Before you can start your crazy contraptions, you need power, or how the mod calls it, rotation. There are various ways to start getting power. The, these blocks are called generators. You can use multiple ones at once to achieve greater power. Generators that will face different rotations won't work together, by the way. Water wheels are one of the basic generators. Look out that the water flows in the same direction and doesn't interfere with each other. The encased fan uses the heat of any fiery source, like lava, to turn a fan. Activate it with a redstone signal and place the fan facing towards the heat, not away. The furnace generator consists out of three blocks. A furnace, a furnace engine and a flywheel. Firstly place the furnace, then on the side the engine. Leave one block free and then place the flywheel. This generator only works if the furnace is active, meaning if he's smelting anything. Double the efficiency by replacing the furnace with a blasting one. The valve is a generator you manually have to use by holding right click. It's available in all colors if you think the default color is hideous. Sneak clicking will reverse it. The hand crank is like the valve, but more powerful. Windmill is a bit more advanced. Next to the windmill bearing and a middle block, you need sail-like blocks. The first ones are white sails. These will attach to the middle block without the need of super glue. When you are done customizing your windmill, right-click the bearing. You need at least 8 sail-like blocks to assemble a windmill. Right-click again to stop the movement. Also, you can right-click with dye to paint them and with shears to remove the sail. Different sail-like blocks are e.g. wool, but need to be connected with super glue. A slime-like sticky block that has to be in between the blocks. That's also how I assembled this big windmill to get the trapdoors moving. And more info about super glue later when you are able to craft it. Change the rotation with a wrench. Conveyors. Conveyors are just how you can transport your energy. Firstly, the shaft. It looks like a pipe and can only connect in a straight line. Cogwheels exist in small and large. Not only that it's way easier to connect them, but you can as well use shafts if you face space issues. This one also allows you to change the speed by using different methods, but that we will talk about in changing gears. Neighboring cogwheels will rotate in the opposite direction. Large cogwheels can be connected to each other at the right angle. Belts can be placed vertically, horizontally, diagonally or vertical and horizontally. 
but you will need at least two shafts facing the same direction. Particle effects show you if the angle is correct. Cancel a placement with a shift right click. If you want, you can always add more shafts in between the belt, remove them with the wrench. You can also dye them. Maximum length can be 20, minimum 2. In case chain drivers, I use the relay rotation with the same speed and even change the axis. Gearboxes exist in vertical and horizontal. You can pass energy to all four sides of the block. Gear shifts act like a shaft, but if you power it with a redstone signal, it will reverse the direction. The more powerful version of this is the sequenced gear shift. If right click, the GOI will open up that allows you to customize a pattern of steps that the machine will go through each time it receives a redstone signal. The modes are turn, with this the rotation will be turned by a specific angle. You can as well decide the speed, should it be like the input or the double amount, or as well if it should be reversed. The next turn command is for pistons, pulleys and gantries. More about them later. These can also determine how far they should be activated and which direction. To pull in, you just need to reverse the direction by the way. The next mode is just delay, meaning how long the machine has to wait until the next command is performed. And awaits means the machine will await for another redstone signal before performing any other commands. The clutch is basically a shaft until it receives a redstone signal. Then it stops and doesn't pass any rotation anymore. Changing gears. Now it gets a bit more advanced. When you want to start some really dope looking mechanisms, you need to learn how to control your rotation speed. The easiest way to do this is by using cogwheels. A large cogwheel powering a smaller one will double his speed. A smaller one halves the speed if connected to a large wheel. The next solution is to use adjustable chain gear shifts. This one can either increase the input or decrease the output speed by attaching some redstone signals to them. Also, these measuring devices you see here are called speedometers. For them to be able to measure your speed, they have to be connected to the system, either from the side or the bottom. Analog to the redstone signal, the chain gear shift can increase the speed up to twice as much if you add a full redstone signal to the input. The less strong the signal, the less speed is added. While if you add a redstone signal to the output, it will subtract speed depending on the redstone signal. The weaker the signal, the less speed will be subtracted. Lastly, the rotation speed controller. This one allows you to control the speed in exquisite detail. Look at it and scroll to adjust it, and it will try its best to configure the speed. If you shift while scrolling, you can also adjust it by one. This isn't a new block, but a principle how to add more rotation speed to your system. By overpowering. What's this fancy word, you may ask? Literally just add another generator and add it to the system. Yeah, that's overpowering. Stress. Before talking about machines, just a quick trip to stress and its impact. Generators will produce a certain stress capacity, while consumers need their stress impact to be satisfied. If this isn't ensured, our system will not work. So the stress needs to be lower or equal. Here you can see all generators with the capacity, as well some consumers with the requirements. As well stress will influence the speed. The more stress, the more speed. When wearing goggles, you will always see extra info on stress, more about them later. One can as well add a stressometer to your system to see how much stress you still have left. If you overstress, either add more generators or use gear shifting to reduce the speed of machines. But keep in mind, you cannot go lower than what's the basic speed. If you place a comparator in front of the stressometer, it will send out a redstone signal depending on the stress level. Machines. I bet you want to do some epic contraptions and automatic stuff, so let's start with machines, as you need new materials to unlock certain contraptions. Firstly, the basin. It can hold fluids and items for crafting. When a valid output is added, it will create a faucet which will output items after they are crafted. If no output is available, you have to manually get it out. A filter can be applied on a basin so it doesn't output the wrong item. Just hold the item and right-click the filter. Right-click with your empty hand to reset it. Firstly, you will need the metal press to make sheets. The metal press has three modes, compacting, packing, and pressing. For the first two ones, you just need a basin. 
The pressing will be enabled when either a belt or a depot is under it. A depot is a table-like station where you can manually place items to be processed. Nothing more. Ores that can be processed into sheets are lapis, blocks, gold, iron, copper and brass ingots. With gold sheets you are able to make two very handy tools. The engineer's goggles and the wrench. The wrench allows you to rotate contraptions. If you sneak, the contraption will be broken and placed in your inventory. When wearing the goggles, you will see the speed of generators, infill about store fluids, and another great item but made out of iron sheets is super glue. It's a use between blocks to assemble them together. When held in your offhand, it will automatically glue blocks together when placed. Remove it with a left click. Packing transforms items into blocks, like iron into iron blocks, glowstone dust into glowstone blocks. <laughs> Compacting converts to flint any sort of sand and lava to one of the newer stone variants. The second machine you need is the mixer. To be able to get brass, firstly the mixer needs a high amount of rotation speed and to connect it to your system, a cogwheel has to be placed on its side. The mixer has three crafting modes, shapeless, crafting, automatic brewing and mixing, which lets you progress further. For crafting you just throw ingredients into the mixer and voila, it will be crafted. Most of them are normal vanilla crafting, like beds or wool coloring. For the next recipes you need to heat your basin so recipes will work. This requires the blaze burner. What you have to do is find a blaze, capture it, and it will generate heat when you feed it. Just place it under the basin and not only you will unlock potion brewing, but as well one of the handiest recipes in mixing. You can feed it just normal, burnable items, such as coal or wood. Brewing works like a normal brewing stand. Start with water and another wood and then you can start your wildest brewing dreams. More interesting is the mixing part. The recipe that doesn't need heating is andesite alloy. One copper and one zinc you are able to make brass, as well as the builder's tea with leaves, milk and water. It grants haste, but I would advise you to rather automate it with fluid transportation. More about that later. As well as chocolate with sugar, cocoa and milk. Chocolate can be processed in a metal press to get chocolate bars. You can eat them. <laughs> the next machine we will be looking at are mechanical crafters. They can be used to craft any sort of recipes. For a valid structure, all parts need to be converged into one exit. Attach cogwheels to power it. The crafting procedure will start as soon as all blocks are filled. If not, you can force start it with a redstone impulse. If a slot is always empty, you can fill it with slot covers, which are used to permanently fill them. To start automating, you have to remove the borders from the back, so the same input location can access it. Why we review this? Because you need a big mechanical crafter setup. 16 andesite alloys, 4 planks and 1 stone to get 2 crushing wheels. A new machine to automate ores. Crushing wheels must rotate in opposite directions in order to work. To be honest, just use a gear shift, that's the easiest way. The recipes can be divided into vanilla crushing to get more materials like blocks or horse armor, or crushing to be able to get more resources out of one ore, and two special recipes. Powdered obsidian, important for a later recipe, and cinder flour, crush netherrack for it. Cinder flour can be used to get blaze cake base, a very handy item for later. It requires a cinder flour, egg and sugar. Pressed in a metal press. And now to some quite useful blocks before we continue with our progression in fluid transfer. Deploy can mimic player interactions. It will interact with anything that's directly two blocks away from it. Blocks in between it won't destruct. It can place blocks, use items, activate blocks, harvest blocks, attack mobs. You can add a filter so only that item will be equipped. Non-matching items will be extracted. By default it imitates a right click. Use a wrench to switch to left clicks. When receiving a redstone signal, it will hinder the deployer from activating again. If moved as a construction, it will activate each block it passes. Another useful mechanical block is the driller. It will break any blocks in front of it. The speed depends on the rotation. 
If moved as a whole, they will break anything in the way. If a chest is applied with superglue, it will store those blocks in it. The mechanical saw can process blocks. It will always process against the rotation power. This block can work in line with belts. When a block has multiple outcomes, you can specify it with the filter or it will cycle through all recipes. Attach a saw sideways and then it will start breaking trees. To fully break a tree, it needs to remove the complete bottom layer. If moved as a whole contraption, they will break any trees in their way. The mechanical harvester will harvest and replant fully grown crops. If a storage is attached to the contraption, it will as well store what it harvests. Mechanical plows can destroy small blocks. Add a storage to let it store the items. As well, it can create farmland and push entities. Millstones grind items. Activate them with cogwheels on the side. Drop your item you want to process on top. After some time, your item will be done. You can as well automate it to extract items. The real use for millstones is probably acquiring more dye from flowers or converting wheat into dough. Combine it with water and then bake it so you only have to use one wheat to make bread. Encased fans aren't only used as generators. With the rotational energy, they create wind currents, the speed and direction depends on the energy. If lava is placed in front of it, it will smelt everything that's in front of it. <laughs> for smoking, use a fire. If water is put in front of it, it unlocks new recipes like concrete powder to concrete, crushed ores to nuggets, convert colored glass or wool, or wheat into dough. It can also be applied on depots or belts. The speed of processing doesn't depend on the rotational speed. It only increases the range. Fluid transfer. To transport fluids, you need pipes and as well a mechanical pump that, when combined with cogwheels, will move fluids along the pipe with a maximum distance of 16. The flow and the direction depend on the rotational energy. Pipes can be opened with a wrench to see if fluids are transported. And the other functional block is the fluid tank, a storage block for fluids. But you can as well store slash extract fluids from basins. Firstly, how to get fluid into your system? Use a hose pulley to start pumping fluids into your system. To do so, I advise a gear shift as it works by lowering the hose to then start putting it into your pipes. More pipes that can be handy with more difficult systems are the valve and the smart pipe. Smart fluid pipes will only extract fluids that match its filter. If no filter is set, it acts like a normal pipe. The valve will hold all fluids trying to go through it. Reverse the rotational energy to start the system again. Item drains will try to empty fluid items, such as bowls or buckets, which were inserted into the block by one side. It then will attempt to output it on the other sides. The portable fluid interface is a way to connect a moving fluid system and a stationary one. Both of them should be one to two blocks away from each other. The spout is a block that will fill items, cover food with sources or convert them. Filling glass bowls with potions, filling buckets like with chocolate or honey. Cinder flowers converted to glowstone with night vision potions, with strength to redstone, instant damage for gunpowder. And some new food items, cover bread with milk to acquire sweet rolls, berries with chocolate to get chocolate glazed berries. Apple with honey for our honey apples. And if water on dirt, grass blocks. This would also be the way to automate the production of builder's tea. But the most important recipe would be filling a blaze cake with lava to acquire blaze cake. You aren't able to consume it, but it's an item you need for progression. If you feed blaze cake to a blaze burner, it will superheat, unlocking two recipes. Any stone blocks can be converted into lava, and the second one is combining three glowstone, three powered obsidian, polished rose quartz to get chromatic compounds. <laughs> Moving contraptions redstone. The turntable is easy to explain. Add energy at the bottom and it moves. To move specific parts of a contraption, you cannot use normal pistons but mechanical ones. On the side, you can power it, but it needs as well extension poles. What are those? Depending on how many you attach at the back, the more it will pull out. As an example, with only two, it can reach two blocks. With four, four blocks. I think you get it. 
The difference between normal and sticky is that normal will only push away blocks, while sticky can pull them again in. So like a piston but with super glue. Also to pull in or out the piston just reverse the energy. With the super glue bigger contraptions can be moved. Normally it will transform back into solid blocks when it stops. Using a wrench on the upper side while scrolling can change this mode. Either you can decide it should always only go back to solid blocks at the starting point or never. Now to chassis. The linear chassis are similar to super glued blocks. They will connect and can be moved as a whole contraption. When facing different direction or other chassis types are added, these will not be moved. You can use slime to make a wooden pattern of a chassis sticky. Right click to make it sticky. Right click again to make the opposite side sticky. Sneak with an empty hand to remove it again. By doing so you can move a specific number of blocks. To precise this use a wrench on the chassis and scroll. Holding control while having to configure multiple chassis, all of them will be changed. Attaching blocks on any other side requires super glue. With this any shape can be moved. The secondary chassis are just a different variant of the previous one. Only connect with their kind if facing the same direction. Radial chassis will connect to only horizontal or vertical ones. All four sides can be made sticky. Right click on once to make one side sticky, right click again to make all sides sticky. Remove with a sneak click. If a block is attached to a sticky side, it will try to move the entire floor if they are touching. If they aren't touching and aren't connected to a sticky side, it won't move. The radius can be determined with a wrench. Maximum is 16. The card assembler when powered with the redstone will attach any blocks above it on minecarts. Deactivate the redstone signal to disassemble it again. When with the help of chassis or super glue, whole contraptions can be transported so. Use a wrench on minecart to carry the whole structure within your pocket. Construction will change directions with the minecart. To disable this, use a wrench on your minecart assembler or if it should uh, pause while rotating. Whenever two card assemblers share the same structure, by powering one you move the whole structure. And the minecarts won't make a halt driving through card assemblers. Place down a powered rail to make them stop until they receive a redstone signal. Other minecarts can also be used as an anchor and they can interact with structures, such as the furnace minecart can extract fuel from storage blocks of the contraption. You've already came across the windmill bearing, with which you were able to generate power with sail-like blocks. There are two more bearing blocks, which we will cover next. The mechanical bearing is used to rotate blocks above it. Upon right-clicking or receiving power, it will construct the structure and begin rotating it. Right-click it again to stop it or remove the power. By default, it will return to the nearest solid block angle. It can be modified with a wrench, so it never goes back to solid blocks or only when you stop it near the starting angle. If a mechanical bearing is part of a moving structure, it will try to stay upright, resulting in contraptions like these. The other bearing is clockwork. This will animate contraptions to the time of the day upon receiving power. If another structure is added without super glue, it will act as the minute hand. Right click the bearing to stop the animation. Rope pulleys can pull up or down contraptions or blocks. The speed and direction depends on your energy. By default, when it stops moving, it transforms back into solid blocks. Change this like for pistons with a wrench, if it should be solid only in the starting point or never. When pulleys are moved while they're still attached to a contraption, this structure will be moved as well. Gantry shafts can be used to move carriages along itself, thus even able to transport whole contraptions. If a redstone signal is applied, it will hold and spread the power to the carriage powering it. The movement direction of the carriages depend on the rotation and orientation of their shaft. Gentries can be attached to carriages without the need of super glue. This also applies on the moved carriage on the attached shaft. Now to some redstone systems. The analog lever lets you choose precisely how much redstone power you want to send out. Right click to increase by one stage, sneak right click to decrease. Redstone contacts will only emit a signal when they are facing each other. Works even in moving contraptions. The sticker is quite easy to explain. Upon receiving a redstone signal, it will stick to the block that's in front of it. 
When now moved, the block will be moved with it. The unstick just provided with the redstone signal. The controller rail lets you precisely control the speed the minecart will receive by modifying the redstone signal. Now to some handy redstone systems. Powered latches will be toggled on upon receiving a signal from behind and toggled off if the signal is from the side, but you can also manually turn them on or off. Power toggle latches work the same, just they will turn on or off by receiving a signal at the back or by manually interacting with them. Adjustable pulse repeaters will send a short delayed pulse upon receiving a signal. By scrolling on it, you can set how much later the signal will be sent. Maximum is 30 minutes. The adjustable repeaters are like repeaters but with a delay. Again, modify the cooldown by scrolling. Pulse repeaters will change any signal they receive and transform them into a short pulse. Now you are able to even link redstone wirelessly with the redstone link. Turn receiving mode on by a sneak clicking or using a wrench. Now they will receive power from a redstone link that's within 128 blocks. To specify a frequency, there are two slots to add items into. Only with matching frequencies it will activate. Item transfer. Firstly, bells can transport items and entities. Right click to get back your item. Chutes can transport items vertically. Use a wrench to get the windowed version. If a chute is placed along a chute's side, they will connect. Fans can be used to transport items upward. Items can be inserted from the side. As well, put on engineer's goggles to see if they go upward or downward, so you can be sure that you don't need to reverse your power. This as well works if the fan is at the top. An improved version of the chute is the smart chute. It can have an item filter if you right click again with a certain amount of blocks in your hand, it will transport the blocks with the same amount per tick. Like have one in your hand per tick, it will only transport one. But with the scrolling you can as well specify the stack size, it transports per tick. As well if powered with redstone, it will stop. Moving inventories cannot be accessed by a player, so you can use portable storage interfaces that will interact with each other. And items can either be inserted or extracted. Empowering one of them with the redstone signal will prevent interaction. Funnels are available in andesite and brass. They are used for transferring items from one inventory to another one. By default they will pull items from inventories, sneak while placing to reverse this or use a wrench. Funnels on belts will change their behavior depending on the rotation of the belt. They can also interact with a ton of blocks like depots, item drains, mechanical source. Deactivated with a redstone signal. While andesite funnels can only extract one item, brass will take full stacks and configure it with scrolling. As well, it has a filter option. Both andesite and brass tunnels can be used to cover up belts. If an andesite tunnel has an output on the side, it will split exactly one item from it while the others stay on their path. But brass ones allow you more configuration. They have a filter slot on each side. Input won't allow any other items to pass through. Filters in the output slots can be used to filter them. If an item has multiple passing points, the distribution mode will decide how it will split up. Configure it with a wrench on the top. You can decide from split, round robin, prefer nearest, randomize and synchronize inputs. Split will uh, try to distribute it evenly. If an input is blocked, it will be skipped. Force split won't skip, but wait at until it can split again. Round robin keeps stacks whole and cycles through the outputs. Once again, if an output is blocked, it will skip it. Forced round robin will await. Prefer nearest will just prefer the nearest tunnel to the input limel. If outputs are blocked, it will prefer the next closest one. Randomize will randomize whole stacks to different outputs. Synchronize inputs will only let items through if every tunnel has one item waiting. This ensures all belts supply items at the same rate. Brass tunnels that are next to each other will form a group and all incoming items will be distributed among them. This even works for inputting items on top. The weighted ejectors are a good way to overcome gaps or if you don't want to craft that many belts. Sneak right click the target location. It can be any height or distance, if no target is selected it will throw it on the block in front of it. As well provided with the rotational power for it to be able to charge. If inventories are targets, it will wait until there's space again. A required stack size can be modified with a wrench, so it doesn't use energy just for one block transports. 
Entities such as this villager will as well trigger the ejector. When powered with a redstone signal, it won't activate. Furthermore, observers detect when ejectors are active, sending a redstone signal. Combine injectors with brass tunnels to extract specific amounts to the side. Firstly, modify the tunnel to prefer nearest. The stack size on the ejector now determines how many items are extracted. Mechanical arms need to be assigned an input and an output. Right-click to do so. When right-clicked, it will be marked as output. Blue input, orange output. Left-click to remove them. They can have many inputs and outputs, but not all inventories can be accessed directly. Funnels can be used to extract items from chests and also to be placed in them. But how can you filter? The arm itself doesn't have a filter option, but you can use brass funnels to add a filter as the arm is smart enough to determine which items can be picked up and which not. This is also the way how to automate the mechanical crafting. What can be modified is the distribution setting on the arm whenever it has to decide between multiple outputs. Configure it with a wrench. Round robin cycles through all outputs. Like already once said, if an output is blocked, it will be skipped. Forced round robin will wait until the output is available again. Prefer first will prioritize the first selected outputs. If one gets blocked, it cycles to the next selected one. Upon receiving a redstone signal, it will be prevented from performing any further actions, but will still finish the task it already began. Thus, one negative pulse will activate one cycle. The content observer will emit a redstone signal if it detects an item in a chewed inventory or on a belt. Leave the filter empty for emitting a redstone signal for every past item. Observed funnels will only emit a redstone pulse. Another block that can detect storage is the stockpile switch. It will scan your inventory and depending on your threshold, it will emit a redstone signal or not. Scroll on both settings to adjust them. Shift for faster. The lower layer is the threshold that it mustn't fall under or the redstone signal will be stopped. The upper layer is the threshold your inventory has to overcome to send a redstone signal. As well, you can invert this meaning it will deactivate the signal when in this specific threshold. The adjustable crate lets you take control over its capacity. It can hold up to 16 stacks. It works with redstone comparators, thus emitting a signal depending how full it is. Lastly, we got two more advanced filters for tunnels and funnels, the filter and brass filter. Let's first start with the easier one, the normal filter. Right-click to open it. If you now assign items in the inventory, they will be whitelisted. Apply it to the filter of the tunnel or funnel and no other blocks will pass through, only the ones you allowed. Left-click to remove them. You can as well change it from a whitelist to a blacklist, meaning blocking all listed items in the filter. The other extra filter is data. Items will only be allowed through if they match their, with their data. Data is for example durability, enchants, etc. Now to the even more complicated version, the brass filter. This is more if you want to go advanced, advanced pro niveau. It uses tags to filter items. The really awesome thing here is you don't really need to search for hours for your tag. You just put one item that is in your desired tag and the ones it's tagged with will show up. Scroll to select and you can decide to either add this tag or its opposite. You can't manually delete tags, but it will have to remove all of them, so be careful which one you add or you have to restart. Lastly, there are three modes. Allow any, allow any items through that fulfill at least one attribute. Allow all means they have to have all attributes from the list. And deny let all items pass that don't have anything in common with your list. Miscellaneous. Now to the category with special items, deco, blocks and tools. The first block is the seed, available in all colors. You can sit on it. <laughs> the nozzles use the pressure that encased fans create and distribute them into all directions. This even works for TNT. Have fun! Nixic tubes will display the redstone signal strength when powered, but you can also use name tags to make awesome LED signs. Maybe you remember our sequenced Gear shift. If you place a comparator next to it and a Nixie tube, you can view its current progress. A cuckoo clock will chime twice each day, always displaying the time for you. It makes a tune during noon and at dusk, when the player is able to sleep. 
It requires power to operate. The first very handy tool Crate adds is the Extendo Grip. It needs to be custom crafted with a mechanical crafter. With it, your range is widely increased, meaning you can even interact with blocks that are far away from you. In your off hand, the tool's range in your main hand is increased. For the next tool set, you need a rather mysterious material, not even JI wants to tell you how to get it. Just make a chromatic compound with superheat in the mixer and drop it on a light source, such as glowstone or in a beacon slide beam. Also, it levitates, so <laughs> don't drop it. The first tool you can craft with it is the deforester. It kills trees within a split second, including leaves. The wand of symmetry will mirror anything you place on a defined line. Shift click to open his GUI, place a mirror with a right click and remove it with another right click in the air. The first mirror is mirror once. You can decide if it should mirror along Z or X. The mirror is rectangular, diagonal or orthogonal. Lastly, octagonal. The handheld block zapper and his creative brother. After creating your black zapper, you will be rewarded with the normal gun without any upgrades. So it will suck. The two materials you can use to upgrade are brass and chromatic compounds. In total, you can upgrade five categories. First is the body. This allows you to replace and pick up blocks harder than 2.5, that's the default. Brass allows you up to five, compound up to 50. The amplifier allows you to place more blocks at once. Brass, three by three, compound seven by seven. The default one is only one by one. Accelerator just decreases the cooldown from 1 second, brass to 0.5 and compound to 0.25. The retriever changes the replacement behavior. While brass ensures that only drops from replaced blocks will be pulled to you, compounds puts all replaced blocks instantly in your inventory. The scope upgrade increases your range. Default is 15, brass is 30, compound 100. <laughs> Now to the details and settings. Left click your desired blocks and right click to start placing. Shift click to open the GUI. On the left side you will see different modes to place blocks. Solid, which just means, you know, solid, checkerboard style in the rolls chance in 25, 50 and 70% chance. Each block has a chance to be placed, determined by the percentage. Also, there are three extra settings. By default, the block zapper will try to mimic the block placement under it, meaning only blocks that are connected. With the follow diagonals, diagonal blocks will be treated as a whole platform. Ignoring material borders allows you to place blocks without worrying what's under it. The last setting is the replace mode. Guess what it does? <laughs> you can replace blocks with it. And of course, scroll to adjust the spread range. As well, there's a handheld wool shaper, but only available for creative, though. Right side are again the same modes in that we already discussed. On the left side, there are three different shapes you can place. Cuboid, which creates cubes, spheres or cylinders. Adjust them with scrolling. Now the special settings. Fill fills in between places, while place will place on top of blocks. Replace will replace blocks, clear will subtract the blocks, overlay adds a layer of your desired blocks, flatten will make your mountains more even, now to placement. Merged will merge half of your structure into the group, attached will add it on top, insert will insert it into already built structures. The Minecraft coupling will attempt to keep them at the same distance. Also the tree fertilizer will speed up the growth of common trees. The speedometer can be viewed with details if you have goggles on and it will send a redstone signal if a comparator is placed. Deco! Brass and andesite casings can be used to decorate shafts and mechanical belts. Use a wrench to remove them from belts. Copper casings are not only used for crafting but are as well a nice deco block you can hide your pipes with it. Wood brackets decorate pipes, cog wheels and shafts with a wood-like style. Depending which direction you are facing, it will be placed differently. This is also available in a metal color. Out of refined radiance, you are also able to make blocks of 4 deco. The chromatic compound can be transformed into shadow steel, made into these new blocks when you throw them into the void in the end, as it will start to levitate, allowing you to pick it up again. 
make these new blocks out of granite, out of diorite, and anasite. As well, you can find stone variants throughout the world. Limestone can be as well made with crushing wheels by crushing diorite or sand and then heat it in a furnace. To get the weathered version, throw your limestone in front of a fan behind a water setup to get a darker damaged limestone variant. Dolomite is a new generating stone, here are all blocks. Gabbro is created by heating granite in a furnace, here are all blocks. Scoria is either found naturally and then heated or just smelt soul sand, here are all blocks. The darker variant is crafted by just squishing some black dye on it, here are all versions. Crate as well adds some new glass blocks, firstly variants of the plain glass and paints. And then even wood and iron decorated windows and even their paint version. Schematics. Schematics allows you to create copies of build structures, save them and let the cannon build them. So let's start. Firstly you have to build your desired copy pasta. Me with my genius building brain created this breathtaking structure and I want to show off to my friends and spam it around their bases. Craft a schematic and quill and right click to set your first corner and right click again to set the opposite corner. Now you are able to see what you've selected. To adjust any side just hold control and scroll. Right click now to save your schematic. Here you can as well just delete it if you made a mess and want to restart without losing the schematic. Now you need a raw schematic and a schematic table. Place the raw material on the table and scroll through your saved schematics. If you have it somewhere else saved, you can click on the open folder to drop it into the default save folder. And a circle thing to refresh your list. After you've decided, you can click on the tick and you got your custom schematic. If you don't want to do this extra step, you can upload it immediately when creating the schematic with the schematic and the quill, but you will lose your quill paper. So after now acquiring your structure paper, right click in your wool to start your placement menu. If you already know how do you want it, a shift right click for coordinates, mirror and rotation. Hold left alt while in this mode to start adjusting and scroll to switch between modes. The first mode is moving your structure along the Z or X axis, depending which side you are looking. Hold control and scroll to adjust. The second one is adjusting along the Y axis. Just control scroll and weesh, it's gone. Third mode is position in case you completely messed up, you can reposition it with a right click. While holding control it will firstly try to position it where you are at. With this you can adjust a specific distance. Scroll to adjust it and now your structure will stay that far away even when you move. The next mode is rotate. Hold control and scroll to rotate it. The last mode is mirroring, at the axis you are currently looking at while of course holding control and scrolling. It's kinda hard to explain with this structure so here's my epic PP statue and how mirroring works. Now that we are done adjusting, it's time to build it. Craft the schematics cannon and fill it with gunpowder. As well you can already place chests next to it where the material will be it has to use to build your structure. Now place your schematic in your cannon and a book on the top right. It will generate a checklist of the blocks you need for the structure. Fill the chest that is placed next to the cannon with your materials. In case there's some materials missing or you want to make sure you got everything, put the checklist again into the cannon and it will generate a new list. After you acquired everything, press play and it will start generating the structure. During this process you can always pause it. Lastly, there are some extra settings in the cannon. Don't replace solid blocks, won't replace any solid blocks, only air. Replace solid with solid, well only if the block that is placed is solid where a solid block was, thus e.g. fences and walls won't be placed underground. Replace solid with any is the default, the normal replacement. The replace solid with empty will clear out blocks that aren't in the schematic, thus the interior. Enable skip missing blocks for the cannon to continue when blocks are missing. This allows you two new modes. If you want some blocks to be left out, just don't include them in your chest and enable skip. Or if more cannons should split up the work, just distribute the material between them and enable skipping. Lastly, protect tile entities. Won't replace blocks such as chests or furnaces. As well, if you are in creative, there's also the print option where you can just insta-place the structure. 
So that was today's video. I know it took <laughs> longer. I will probably also review the add-ons for Crate. Please, please, pretty please, just, um, if you want to support me, check out my gaming channel, please. I really try hard there as well. And now I would say we'll see us in the next video. I hope you enjoyed. Ciao!